Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very, very warm welcome on this beautiful, mellow fall evening. My name is Ulrika al Khamis, and I am the Director of Collections and Public Programs here at the Aga Khan Museum. And it's my great delight and honor today to introduce our wonderful guest speaker. Before we begin, I would very much like to acknowledge that the land on which the Aga Khan Museum is built has been a cultural meeting place for many, many centuries under the stewardship of the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, including the Huron Wendat, the Petan First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, of course, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We honor them and we thank them for their stewardship of the land. Born and raised in Paris to Tunisian parents, El Cid grew up torn between French culture and the Tunisian culture of his parents. And as a result, until he was 18 years old, he didn't write in Arabic and he didn't read in Arabic. But then he went off on a quest to rediscover his heritage and his roots. And ever since then, he has been working on highly acclaimed public art projects all around the world, merging Arabic script and graffiti techniques into mesmerizing, swirling compositions that appear at first sight illegible, but do in fact encapsulate very profound and thought-provoking messages for us all. Whether in the Arab world, in Paris, in New York, in Melbourne, most recently in Korea, or indeed currently here in Toronto, where he is working with five fellow artists on a major project connected with Nuit Blanche and based on Dundas Square and uh, Scarborough Center, he always aims to create a dialogue between the location of his work between the choice of his quotes that are encapsulated in the calligraphic or the calligraphitic artworks that you see and his audiences, thereby promoting tolerance, changing perceptions and spreading messages in peace and unity across the world. As he puts it himself, art brings people back to their sensibility as human beings. This is the purpose of art, to bring people together and bring back the humanity as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to sit down, so I'm like at the same level as you. Um, so, yeah. so uh, People usually they ask me what I like the most about what I do. And uh, uh, back in the day, it used to be like the artistic challenge, you know, like trying to get to places and painting everywhere and, uh, you know, leaving your trace in uh, as many places as you could. And, uh, you know, with time, I just realized that, uh, you know, like I think uh, I maybe grew up and, uh, and the project, actually the scope of my project changed as well. And I realized that today, the, uh, what I love the most uh, in my, I don't want to say my job because this is not a job. I don't look at it, at it as a job, even if, I, even if I work more than when I used to have a normal nine to five job. I think what I love the most today is the human experience, is uh, how I, I get through art uh, to meet people, to go to places that I would never go if it was not because of art. So I just want to give you an example. So imagine, for example, you, you, uh, you, you knock at somebody's house and you just uh, ask him to, to serve you like a cup of water and, uh, and you tell him, tomorrow I'm going to come back and you're going to serve me a drink. And after a few days, uh, I will be back again and you're going to just invite me uh, to have lunch with your family and maybe probably after two weeks you I will come with you to your cousin's wedding. The guy might think that you're crazy, you know. And, uh, 
But if you go to this guy's house and you just say, hello, I'm an artist and uh, I, I would like to paint on your, on your house, the first day we'll look at you like you'll be like, this guy is weird, why did he come here? And then the next day we'll see like you're working, so we'll say, okay, I'm gonna let me offer him a drink. And then I'm gonna start talking to you and then he will invite you for lunch and then you're gonna start knowing him and his family and then you're gonna get to go to his uh, cousin's wedding and, uh, and then, you know, like the day you, you leave, like he's gonna cry and maybe you, you as well. So, so I really believe that there is, um, I mean, I really believe that art is just uh, an excuse, you know, like a, a, a pretext for the, uh, the human experience, you know, because I don't think I will be able to tell you any story tonight if uh, it was not because of art. And, uh, and that's what I'm gonna do tonight. So it's a kind of chill speech. So if you want to cut me and ask me a question, we can do it, but it's better for the recording of the video to do it at the end of the, uh, of the session. Yeah, this is a protocol. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, let me get back to my, uh, to my speech. I tried to write a speech, but in the same time, I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go like with the flow. So um, thank you, Eric, for, for the introduction. So as she said, I'm, I'm, I'm born and raised in France from, from Tunisian parents. So uh, I, I started learning how to read and write at the, at the age of 18. So I didn't know how to read and write before. And uh, I started learning Arabic because uh, I had this kind of identity crisis in France. I didn't know if I was French uh, or Tunisian. In France, I didn't feel French. And when I used to go to Tunisia during the summer, actually, I didn't feel Tunisian as well, because people, they used to call us uh, chez nous là-bas, like uh, FC, uh, in French they used to say FCR. FCR is the, you know when you bring a, a, a car from France and you change the plate, it's called FCR. So they, that's the, the nickname they used to give us. So, uh, so I had this kind of crisis and then I realized that, um, I, I felt that I needed to make a choice, choosing between being French or Tunisian. And, uh, and then when I look at myself in the mirror, I feel like I was looking more as somebody who was called Mohammed than somebody called Jean-Jacques. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I decided to, uh, to run into my Arabic roots. So I started learning how to, how to read and write Arabic. And, uh, and then I, I discovered calligraphy and then just grew up like that. But, um, so like it's actually like yeah I learned like at 18 and I remember the first uh, the first word that I managed to read it was in Tunisia walking on the street summer 2000 and it was uh, Russell like it was pressing like you know um, uh, dry cleaner so that was the first word that I that I wrote that I, I managed to read in Arabic by myself and I was so happy so yeah um, so so yeah so this is um, this is this is my uh, actually the, the base of what I do. And um, I'm not a calligrapher. You know, people sometimes they ask me, they say, can you teach me calligraphy or do you do workshop of calligraphy? And I, I say, yes, I do workshop, but I don't teach calligraphy because calligraphy, to pretend or to call yourself calligrapher, you need to, uh, you need to learn from a master who learn calligraphy from a master and just goes on like 1400, 1400 years back. So I'm not a calligrapher, so actually my calligraphy doesn't, I don't respect any rules of, of uh, traditional calligraphy. So I just use Arabic script and mix it with graffiti. Uh, I used to call it calligraffiti. Some people keep calling it like that today, but I felt the word has changed, so I don't really call it like that today. Um, so I write messages. Uh, I try to always make sure that what I write is relevant to the place where I'm painting. But uh, I try to use, make sure the message has also this uh, universal dimension so anybody around the world can relate to it. So that's, uh, that's what I do. So now I'm just gonna tell you about some of the project and, and, uh, and speak about them. Uh, one of them, as you mentioned, it was a few months ago, actually in November 2017, uh, we installed the piece uh, on the border of North and South Korea on the DMZ. So, uh, it was more than a year ago, in May 2017, I received this message from this Korean creator that was uh, in Dubai, where my studio is right now, and he said, I want to meet you, we uh, would like to propose you a, a project. And uh, his idea 
what he wanted and what the museum wanted was that I uh, could propose an art piece that celebrates the reunification between North and South Korea. So there was no discussion at this time, it was 2017. Like the two presidents, Trump was not involved yet. And, um, and for me it was weird, I was like, why Korean people, they will get me, like French Tunisian artists or Tunisian French artists, it depends from which side you are. Yeah, sometimes there is fight, uh, just, not, not really, on Twitter sometimes like people say it's Tunisian, and then your French people say, no, it's French. And so I'm like, guys, don't fight, you know, we can be both. But, um, so they say, why, like, you would ask a French Tunisian artist to, uh, to create a piece, and you know that I paint in Arabic, uh, I create, my artwork is like from, like from Arabic calligraphy, to celebrate the reunification of two countries. And so I'm like, okay. So I went, we went to the DMZ, uh, we met the people of the museum, and I said, you know what, I want, to, uh, I want to create something actually that is a symbol of my artwork. So, you know, usually I say that my art like create bridges between people, culture, and generation, and so I wanted to create a bridge. The idea was to create, a, I'm gonna start the first slide, yeah, okay. Uh, the idea was to create actually a bridge that starts in South Korea, like the shape of a bridge, and, uh, and having the same piece in North Korea. So everybody was super excited, and then the military, they say actually it's not possible, so you need to bring down the sculpture. So it was like 20 meter high, I like going high, 20 meter, and so we bring it down, bring it down, and then at the end they say, the only place you can put your artwork is on the fence. So this is the DMZ. So that was, I mean, it's cool. Come on, guys, we have like a, like, it's not, it's not like the initial artwork, but I'm super happy about it, seriously. You know, now because we went, you know, like you deal with the military, and the funny thing, and uh, the funny thing is that we installed the piece uh, in November 2017, the, exactly the same day when Trump was going uh, in, was in his uh, South Korean trip, and, uh, and that was funny because he was saying that on CNN, uh, they were saying that uh, Trump didn't go to the DMZ because of bad weather, and actually it was, it was no bad weather, like seriously. <laughs> no, it, it was sunny, not really. And so if you check my Instagram at this time when I first posted, I, there was a hashtag, no bad weather, but I think, <laughs> so it was, it was just like a kind of Insta joke, nobody knew about it, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. So that was the piece, and um, it was uh, the text. Actually, it's a, it's a poem from a, from a Korean poet. I say Korean. I didn't say South or North Korean, uh, because he passed away in 1934, before the separation, who happened in 53. And uh, this poet Kim So he wrote a poem, like a love poem, that called "Unable to Forget." And uh, actually, when you take this poem into the context of the separation today, it's like. Uh, I mean, it's like the perfect text for this situation. So this is a translation of, a, of the poem written like over like 63 meters on the, on the fence. And, um, and the goal actually was to continue, this, um, to continue this project, but to install the real piece in North Korea. So we reached North Korea as well, and, uh, and uh, ironically, they were like way more open than South, which, uh, which is actually uh, funny. They were like, okay, you can come. if. Uh, I mean, we cannot help you financially, but we would be happy to. Uh, we would be happy if you if you can come and install your piece. So uh, we tried to fund it, and then in April 2018, like uh, one Friday, I woke up and I see that the two presidents they start talking. So I kind of gave up on the uh, on the project, but maybe I, I might do it just for the fun to say like we did a piece in North Korea as well. So um, yeah. So this is uh, Kim Ji Hoon. This is a South Korean woman that we met during the project, and, um, and yeah, that's a, I don't take selfie, but I had to take a selfie with this woman. And she, uh, what was interesting about this woman, she, she was married with a North Korean guy, a man who uh, came to South Korea, and then he couldn't go back to uh, North Korea, so he abandoned actually his, his daughters and his wife, so he never, I mean, his family never knew about him, so he never knew about them as well which is sad, and uh, when you hear South Korean, they tell you that they wish, actually, like the two countries like, could come back together, something that you never hear, actually, on the media, so it was, uh, it was actually interesting to meet this one. So, yeah, and um, so that was in South Korea, and at the DMZ, and, um, you know, we, a few years ago, in 2014, uh, had the chance to go to Brazil, 
as well in, uh, in, in Rio de Janeiro. And, uh, and I remember, he, I, I don't know why, every time I go to places when people tell me don't go there, this is dangerous, I'm like, I don't know, I don't believe those stuff. So uh, I think people, like, we all human, you know, like, uh, and it depends on the way you try to connect with people. And uh, in, we went to a favela, the Vidigal favela, and, uh, and I remember I used this poem from this woman called Gabriela Torres Barbosa, which is a, a poet from one of the favela of Rio, and she did a, a beautiful poem uh, uh, about the poor people and the black community of, uh, of, of Brazil, and this is... What I, what I painted on the, uh, on, the, on the wall. And you know, usually people, they really feel intrigued. You know, they were like, what this guy is doing? And, uh, and you know, when you explain why you're doing it and what's the meaning of it, they really feel connected to the piece. And um, I didn't know, but this uh, building actually was a, was a school that uh, the f Brazilian photographer, Vic Muniz, was building into, uh, in the favela, and I didn't know. I, I picked it and I painted it, and then a few days after he came, he came and he posted on his story like uh, saying, uh, when I came to the favela this morning, I found this piece by a, an identified artist. Thank you very much for this piece. And then I was like, well, out of the 10,000 houses, I, I had to paint the house of Vic Minis. Yeah, so that's cool, yeah. Um, another example, you know, of uh, places that people tell you not to go is, uh, for example, the slum of, of Cape Town. Uh, I remember this, uh, this wall actually is the only concrete wall of the, uh, of the neighborhood, I mean, of the slum, which is a school. And uh, I was invited for a, for a talk back in 2012. And uh, there's one thing I didn't mention, but I think it's interesting to say. Um, I started painting before the Tunisian Revolution. And a lot of people think that uh, I, just, uh, I just appeared in 2011. And I didn't paint during the revolution. I, I was not in Tunisia during the revolution and never used or uh, promote myself by this. I don't think it's, uh, I think it's really opportunistic to do something like that. So um, I used to be invited by people all over the world and they asked me, I oh, would like to, to talk about graffiti and street art uh, in the Arab world. And so I used to accept invitation. So I gave a talk in Harvard. I gave a talk to this World Economic Forum in Cape Town. And you know, they were surprised. I said, yes, I'm gonna come and speak. And then they realized that I had nothing to do. Was, uh, what I was doing was, has nothing to do with the revolution. So it was, uh, it was funny. So um, yeah, they create this kind of romance at this time. So uh, I was invited for a talk and in, uh, in Cape Town and we were driving and I saw this slum called Philippi. And, uh, and there was a little tiny mosque. And I'm like, you know what? I want to go there. That will be my point of contact. The people who were driving me told me, no, don't go. It's, uh, it's dangerous. And so we went. I entered the mosque. And it was the, the imam of the mosque was there. And I said, look, I'm, a, I'm an artist. I would like to paint something in the neighborhood. Can you help me? He said, no, you cannot. I'm like, please. He said, no. And then I show him my work. He said, oh, paint the mosque. I'm like, no, I don't want to paint the mosque. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and then he called the guy who came after like 10 minutes. His name was Forrest. And, uh, and then he said, okay, come on Wednesday. Everybody will know that uh, you, you will be here. So you can come. So we came back on Wednesday, and actually, like, all the kids of the neighborhood, they were painting. And uh, it's a quote from Mandela that says, uh, it seems impossible until it's done. So that's what is written there. Um, yeah, still, like, uh, you know, for example, this piece is a, is a funny one. It was a project we did in Tunisia called The Lost Walls. And uh, it's in a small, tiny village called Qsar Haddad in south of Tunisia. So usually, you know, like uh, when we did this project, Lost Walls, it was a, a road trip all around Tunisia. And uh, we used to go to places that uh, has history or people and that people forgot. And the main thing was um, after the revolution in 2011, everybody used to speak about economical, political, and social issues. And, uh, and Tunisia actually, like, rest on his, uh, like the strength of Tunisia is tourism, and uh, we have a strong and deep history and culture. So nobody was talking about our heritage. So I'm like, I'm gonna go and just find this little town and find the little story or history that they have and talk about it. And uh, on this little town, when we entered, there was a cafe, and uh, there is a saying in Tunisia that says like, you enter a city from its men. So we go to a cafe and I introduce myself and I say, look, I'm an artist and uh, I would like to paint here. There's a wall over there with the owner and there's a guy who says, it's my wall, you, it's okay, paint on it. So I go, I start painting and then I think I was almost done and there's this guy that comes screaming, 
Like, there was a young guy and an old man. Uh, the young guy was screaming, and the old man was like uh, super mad. He was like, do you think I'm dead for you to paint on my house? Da -da -da. Who did you ask you to? I was like, I asked this man. You told me this is his house. He said, no, no, this is mine. You need to erase that. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm sorry. So I said, please, Amo, uh, uh, my uncle, can you just let me finish, and then I will take my picture, and then I will erase it. <laughs> and he said, okay. And then I think like when, when I was done, the funny thing, he sent his nephew, like the young man that was with him, and his nephew said, actually, my uncle like it, so just uh, keep it. <laughs> you know, so, so that was, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, during the same trip, like uh, in, uh, in Tunisia, during the Lost Walls, uh, you see on top of the canyon over there, you don't see it on the picture, there is a, a little house. We didn't notice. And this little house, actually, is a, it's a kind of cabin, barrack, for like a military, from soldiers. There were some soldiers there. So we're pin I painted this wall around 12 o'clock noon, like during the, the August heat. It was super hot. And then in the afternoon, we climbed a mountain just in front of it to paint this. And then at 6 p.m., there is um, like a, a military car that come, like with weapon. And I was like, wow, and me have like my spray can, I throw them. <laughs> and then I, I go, and then they ask us, what are you doing? And like, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm painting, and I'm doing this and this. And they're like, why? And then they ask us, you know, our ID, uh, me and all my team. And then I told them, look, I'm going to the city, and then the next city will be this one. And the guy, actually, the captain of the army was like, um, are you going to this city? I was like, yes, we're going there in 10 days. And uh, uh, it was in El Kef, north of Tunisia. And actually, he was getting married at the same time we were going to be there. So the captain of the army, like, who was about to arrest us, invited us to his wedding. So, um, <laughs> so that's, you know, that's what I say when I say, like, art bring people together. If I was... Uh, if I was there like doing something shady or like just playing soccer, they, they would be like, why are you doing, why are you playing soccer in this place, you know? But, and then sometimes like people, they don't really understand why you do it. Um, for example, like, and then I'm gonna just turn the page of Tunisia. I'm trying to be like a, an ambassador of uh, tourism in Tunisia. Like, so <laughs> I'm promoting right now. That's why, you know, like first slide about the same country, you know, so I'm, yeah. no, so this is uh, my hometown of, uh, of Gabes in south of Tunisia. Um, in 2012, I was looking for a, actually a wall to paint in my, in my city, and uh, they built the mosque in 94, and they never painted it. They left it gray for uh, 94, 2012, 18 years. Uh, and so we went and we asked the imam if it was possible to paint on the, on the mosque, and he said, Alhamdulillah, <laughs> in Tunisian, which means, thank God you came. And uh, like, he didn't ask us anything, neither a sketch, no matter what I was going to do, paint, write. I could even have painted my face, maybe would have said yes, you know. And uh, it was so cool. So because that was a mosque, I, uh, I decided to write a verse from Quran that says, uh, oh, you mankind who have created you from a male and a female and made you people and tribes so you may know each other. So that's what is written. Actually, both, like, both sides. This both sides. But this one is less famous than the previous one. Yeah, people know this one. Uh, so there's two faces. And... Uh, what was cool about this project is like to see how people, they just used to gather like at the bottom of the mosque and, uh, and to see, you know, sometimes people, they don't want change. Because imagine for people who see like a gray wall for 18 years, so as soon as you touch it, they're like, oh, what are they doing? They're like, me <laughs> harbul So I'm like, okay, so you're like, okay. And then, you know, like, and then you, start, you hear that. And I remember there was a, a Facebook page used to be called Gabes Book. It was so funny because like people were saying so many crazy stuff, you know. And me, I was reading that. Yeah, I felt so sad. And some friend of mine they used to go. He said, "No, he's from the city because people are like, why is somebody from outside come and paint the mosque of Gabes?" And people, because I didn't live in Gabes, some people didn't think I was from there. And um, and then like yes, step by step, when they see the piece coming up, they like start like uh, liking it. And uh, it was cool to see like all those people gathering some religious people, some non-religious, like some people with different political view and just having some debate about like art in the public space. And um, that was actually a cool moment. And we, it was one of the, my, I don't know if it was my favorite project. I don't think there's a favorite project because each one has like his own story. Sometimes you just paint a little wall in a place and you get a memory from it that is, that I'm like uh, uh, dear to your heart. But sometimes you have also like uh, not bad, uh, experience, but this one, for example, is uh, 
one of the not cool experience. So you see there is a white wall on the back over there. So I painted this wall first. It was a festival organized in, a, not a festival, there is a guy uh, who wanted to promote this little village called uh, Montry. So Montry is the only village that was not bought by Disneyland Paris. So there's Disneyland Paris, Disneyland they own everything, and then you have Little Montreal, which is a little town. And so he wanted to promote and like, help the economy of the, the village by creating a kind of uh, uh, out, outdoor museum. So I was in Paris, and he said, okay, can you come paint a wall? And uh, each you know, owner of the, of, of the houses of the village, some people, they say, okay, we paint. Some others, like, if you, some people give authorization. So I painted the little house on the back, and as soon as the guy saw that I was painting in Arabic, he got really mad. It was uh, April 2012, at the time of the presidential election, and uh, he just went crazy. And he said, like, you need to erase this piece of beep from my wall. <laughs> and so I was mad, so we painted over it. And the week after, I was, uh, I was still there, and the guy called me, he said, look, we have a wall that, uh, that you can paint on that belongs to the city, which is this one. And, uh, and the funny thing I didn't know, but it happened that, uh, like, you see the house over there? That's his house. So from his, the door is on the left here. So actually, when he comes out of his house, <laughs> you, see, uh, you see my wall. So I, I wanted to write Alawajak, uh, which means uh, on your face in Arabic. <laughs> but uh, I tried to be nicer and more uh, smarter than this guy. So I, I wrote Aftah Galbak, which means uh, open your heart. So, yeah. And the piece is still here. I wish I can go back there, you know, like to, uh, I mean, to, to meet him and say, like, man, what's wrong with you? You know, like, seriously. I wish I knew his name, you know, because at least when I speak of him, because I mention him in my talk when I speak, and I would love to say, like, Monsieur Dupont, you know, <laughs> you know. And it would be nice if I go and say, like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, like, it was a mistake, you know, stereotyping, election, national, like, Front National and stuff. And that, uh, yeah, so this wall is in Algeria, and uh, it was, uh, it was uh, actually, I painted the, fourth, the f four first verse of a song from Dahman al-Harashi. I don't know if you know Dahman al-Harashi. No, nobody knows Dahman al-Harashi. This is sad, wow. <laughs> no, seriously, Dahman al-Harashi, I'm sure you, all of you, you know the, you know Rashid Taha. Rashid Taha. Okay, so can somebody sing me one of the famous songs of Rashid Taha? You know? Okay, so this song is not Rashita, it's Dahman al Harashi. So, it's in reprise. I don't know if it's a reprise in French. Okay, so Dahman al Harashi wrote a song called Bilad al Khair, like the country of the good. So, it was kind of making an homage to Algeria, but at the same time criticizing uh, the way like the, the country was run. And um, it was cool. And actually, this is the only. Sorry, I'm going to drink because. This is the only piece that has a name. So in Algeria, they call this piece Zlabiya. I don't know if you know the Zlabiya. This is a sweet, orange sweet that usually we use during Ramadan. You know that, I don't know. So because it's orange and round, they call it the Zlabiya. So. And what was cool about this wall, actually, is, the, is like the ambience. And I remember, like, um, you know, there's a little window on the top over there. So I was painting. I was at the seventh floor. And then there is a, the window that opened, and there is a woman who says, like, did you eat my son? And I'm like, no, I'm going to have lunch after. And then she just like, took me, like, give me like, a plate of couscous, you know, with chicken, like, hot, ready. I was like, wow. You know, so imagine, if it was not because of art, I don't think she would have done this. You know what I mean? And I don't think I would be like, up to the seventh floor if it was not because of art. You know, so, yeah. So that's the thing. And, um, Another story, like for example, I usually, you know, when I go to, to places, I always, when I start working, I say, look, I'm in this place, and I just want to uh, test the level of hospitality of a city. So what do I do? I just ask the most random thing, and to see if people will bring it. And uh, I remember in Houston, it was like midnight, and I, and I said, uh, we're still working, it's midnight, we're tired, please bring us french fries. And I swear, like there is, I think, three people who came between midnight and 1.30 a.m. to bring us french fries, you know? How amazing is that? So tomorrow, guys, get ready, because we're, gonna, we're installing a piece in Dundas Square. So I'm just going to say, like, I'm going to say, like, please bring us sashimi salmon, you know, like, you know? 
I did it once, and I saw like people about me sashimi salmon, you know. <laughs> so it works. Yeah. There's a guy like, for example, in Philadelphia. I said, I wrote, please bring karak. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I wrote this, and there's a guy who, who drove from Washington D.C. I swear, he wrote from Washington, a Kuwaiti guy. He drove from Washington D.C. to Philadelphia, and I saw he brought me karak. And I'm like, you're crazy. He brought me something else as well, but he brought me karak. I was like, you're crazy. So that, that's cool, you know? And, and this is what I love actually about what I do. That, not that people bring me food, but that you, <laughs> you know, that you manage to, uh, to create like this kind of relationship. And, uh, and I try also to invite people to, to paint with me. So most of the work that I do, you know, when I paint in the public space, I invite people to participate. When I say participate, it's not like they decide and they paint instead of me, so it's like, I say, look, can you put this color in all the space? And then you give this kind of feeling of pride, you know? And uh, I don't have a picture of this wall, but um, in 2011, uh, a year actually after the revolution in Tunisia, I went back and I painted in a city called Kairouan. And um, it was a 40 by seven meter wall. Actually, that was the first really big wall that I did. And um, when I start painting, there is a kid, which is not a kid anymore today. Uh, he said, what are you doing? And I said, look, I'm, uh, I'm painting. He said, can I help? I said, yes. So he came, and then he called his brother. And then there is two girls, two sisters who came, who were passing by the wall. They said, can we help you as well? So they helped me. And then there's two other person. And those six people, they stayed with me for 10 days. Um, today, out of the six people, I'm still in touch with the first one, actually, who, who works with me, was supposed to be here today because he didn't get his visa. It is for Monsieur Trudeau. Uh, uh, so no, actually, he, um, so I called him after six months when we did the minaret, and I said, look, uh, Mehdi, can you come and help me on this project? He said, like, look, I'm, I'm not really interested in uh, painting, but I would love to work with the team who document you know, your project. So I'm like, okay, so come. So he did an internship with us uh, for, uh, yeah, for like five weeks. And then uh, the year of uh, the baccalaureate, he, we took off, we, he came off from school like for two months, so he went with us on a project in Doha. Then he came like on, uh, in Egypt. He was with me in Italy recently. So now like he's been seven years, and now he's, uh, he's, he's part of my team. And I remember he's, he was 16 at this time, and he was telling me like I wanted to be part of this just to say like even in 10 years or 15 years I was part of something, and I'm proud. I'm proud that I. I did something, and there was no financial compensation. Nobody was, you know, like they were staying with me until 11 p.m. And uh, you know, when I work, I'm a kind of dictator. Like, you know, I'm like, and, uh, and they're like, yeah, it's just, just to be able to say we did something, you know? Not for money, just to say like, we did something for the community, we did something for the country, and that's how this, they did it. So talking about, uh, oh, I thought, I'm wrong slide, yeah. That's uh, talking about walls. Sometimes, you know, like you do walls uh, just for the sake of, not of doing it, but for the space, you know? just, I think, for the environment. This one is like Le Pont des Arts in Paris, and uh, people, they were really mad at me because it was at the time, you know, this is the lock bridge when they used to lock their love, people, which is not a French tradition. It's, it started in 2006 because of a movie, you know, so, it's, so people, they started doing it. And so because the lock was so heavy, um, like one fence fell off. So the city decided to remove all the lock and for six months to put my artwork and the artwork of three other artists. So this is uh, in Pont des Arts, but not anymore. And then you have, uh, yeah, that's another one in Paris. And actually, like, you know, what I'm saying is like, sometimes when you paint in big cities, you don't have the same uh, interaction with the community that when you paint in a small village or like in a kind of, I don't like to say like third world because that's not a nice word, but you understand what I mean. You know, like something popular, like shabby, you know? And because people, they, I think people are more, uh, happy to see you when you come to a place because they feel like you're giving them importance. Um, so this is in Dubai. I love this wall, not because I did it, just because of the shape, but to be honest with you, that was the most boring experience ever, <laughs> really. Uh, because, seriously, I'm sad to say this, but it was really boring. Nobody came, you know, it was, there was no, um, no real interaction, and the wall was really difficult to do because the more you, you paint, the more you feel like the wall is getting bigger because it's just, it was crazy, yeah. And then sometimes you find little walls like that, like we did during Lost Walls, like in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I feel like this wall was just put there like 
for me. I was like, okay, you know, so it's funny. But um, I would love to speak about this project, which is actually a, a project we did in 2016 uh, in Egypt. It took us uh, a year actually to plan and uh, a month to do. So this is um, a place called Manchiat Nasser, which is uh, known, used to be known, and now less as, uh, as Zabalin, which means in, Ar in Arabic, uh, garbage collector. Like, and uh, this is a neighborhood of the Cairo garbage collector. So actually this community, the people who live there, it's 70,000 people, they collect the garbage of the city, they bring it to the neighborhood, they sort it, and they recycle it. And uh, they develop the most powerful recycling system of the world. So there is nobody that can do what they do. They manage to recycle more than 80% of what they collect when the city of London in UK recycle only 17%. So, um, so the idea, you know, when I started this project, it was, uh, for me, was uh, I want to beautify like a poor area, you know, like this kind of uh, idealistic uh, idea. And uh, so we went there in 2015 to visit. And then, you know, I remember myself, we sat in a cafe, and uh, I couldn't even drink. Um, we, I bought a Coke, and I remember, like, we were, like, four, 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 me and three members of my team. They each ordered, like, a tea, and me, I couldn't, like, I was like, guys, how do you do this? Like, you, you're drinking from this cup. And me, I was so disgusted because I had, like, so many stereotypes about this place and, this, uh, and these people. And then we spent a few days... And then we realized, actually, that uh, they were not living in the garbage, but they were living from the garbage. So, and even the garbage that they were living from, like they make money out of it, it, was not coming from them. It was the city, it was coming from the city of Cairo. And then I, I remember, like, uh, it's a Christian Coptic community. I will show you a short video made by Mehdi, which is not here. Thank you, Trudeau. And I'm joking. <laughs> no. um, uh, uh, so you will see. And... Um, and yeah, so let's watch the video and then we uh, and then we keep the conversation. Will? Hello, I'm Mr. Fauzi. We're here a lot. My name is Mr. Fauzi. I'm a man. 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 C'est quoi ça C'est ma... Euh, on l'a fini quoi C'est le monde neuf. Mais ça passe vite hein Faut y aller tout de suite bah, On avait demandé si on était prêt pour Zavalide. On est prêt euh, On est prêt euh, mon pote ah ouais, On est prêt On va à la porte euh, إحنا بسطاء 
يعني في واحد يبقى غني 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 ومعاه فلوس كتير ومش مبسوط بعشته لكن احنا زي ما احنا كده بس احنا مبسوطين بعشتنا صدقني صدقني عند عيالي بيحبوكم جامد لا 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 فوزي بس الاحساس Thank you. So those people are like the garbage, Cairo garbage character. So that was actually like, uh, you see this man at the end, Uncle Bakhit, Amu Bakhit, the guy who hugs me. So that's the guy who invited us to his cousin's wedding, who uh, had lunch with him, and uh, who cried when we left. So now was, that's, uh, actually this project, uh, I was, uh, how can I say this? You know, when you come out of something like that, it's uh, actually anything after this was like kind of tasteless. You know, it's, uh, so that's why we're closing this project. It's been two years, so next week actually we're launching the book about, uh, about this project in New York. And, uh, and then there's a movie coming, being of 2019. So for me, it's like, okay, so it's done, so I need to move on. So now, hopefully in 2019, we're doing another a big project like that. And uh, just to let you know, this is, it's not commission. There's, uh, there's nobody behind it. So it's an initial, like a personal initiative. So we just decided one day to, to go. And, uh, and we met one guy who introduced us to Mario. You know, the guy who was driving the car. It was a Polish, a Polish guy who's been living there for 20 years. And he introduced us to the priest, Abuna Samaran, who actually validated, the, like stamped the project in a certain way. And when the Father Samaran like, said, uh, OK, like the whole community said, OK. If Father Samaran said, OK, OK, paint my house. So that was easy, actually. So, and, uh, and that's what is amazing about, uh, actually about this project is that. It's like you go to a place that everybody's scared of. You know, like the taxi the first day was like, I don't go to this place. It's like, no, like, I'm scared. No, not scared, but it's like you, it's dangerous. And then now we go. And uh, I mean, we're still in touch with them. I was with them on the phone, like uh, with uh, one of them who's getting married in uh, November 10th, inshallah, so we're going to go. And uh, so he was, come, he was telling me, come 10 days before the wedding. I'm like, I can't. You know? And I said, like, see, so you leave the whole experience. I'm like, OK. I will be there on the 10th. Don't worry. You know? But you know, we were there like actually in, uh, in, in May as well. And, uh, and the funny thing, you know, when I go, seriously, like, I feel I'm going back to, uh, to Tunisia. You know, like, it's like you're visiting your whole family. So everybody's like, oh, no, have lunch with me. Have dinner with me. Sleep in our house. So that's. Uh, that's, I don't know, like the, uh, the good part of it. And, uh, and you go in a place, you know, I think those people, they, um, nobody go there, you know? Like usually people are scared, not scared, but people are scared to go there and even them, they're suspicious as well when they see people coming from outside. So 
I don't know. We never thought like this project would be like that. And uh, and I got an interview this morning with uh, Radio Canada, and the, the the journalist was asking me, uh, do you why do you always make your stuff big like that? And to be honest with you, it was a mistake. We uh, it was not supposed to be as big as that. So the first day I traced uh, the part on the right here, and I went on top of the mountain to look at the pieces. I was like, wow, we will never finish. You know, it's impossible because like it was too big, and we managed it. It was cool, and uh, those people are amazing. And uh, you saw there was this drone shot of a church. So um, actually, when you look at the piece, the church is just behind you. And so uh, if you go to Cairo, you should go there. You know, like the Saint Simon Monastery. It's an amazing place, and you can even do like zip line. Actually, like uh, we call that zip line. There's a zip line that go from the mountain to in front of the church. Not really. If you see you're coming from me, they might not let you pay, so, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, so we had an amazing time, you know, like, uh, we had people from the community that they were helping us working, and, uh, and also all the people from the community were, like, inviting us, offering us tea and lunch, and, uh, and it was the most amazing human experience that I had in my life, seriously. And sometimes, you know, like, when I was telling you, like, I was disgusted, like, to drink a like a can of Coke at the beginning. You see me, like we're like having lunch in their house. And, uh, and then everything becomes normal. You sit on a stack of garbage. You see like rats passing behind you. <laughs> and you see they, they have pigs. You know, they use the pigs, you know, to recycle the organic waste. So like you paint, and you have like 20, 50 kids just under your feet. And you're like, and pigs like smell really bad. And, uh, and, and actually like we, we got the, the smell in our clothes. It was, it was difficult. I mean, difficult for the, for the dry cleaning close to the hotel, like, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, oh, there's a slide missing, yeah. And one cool thing that we did, uh, actually at the end of the project, we, um, in Egypt, they have this uh, thing that says, Nawartuna, which means you brought light to us. So it was not, it was a coincidence, but we planned actually to do this before, but uh, we, the white, color of the painting, actually the white paint was fluorescent white. So uh, we decided actually to run those black light projectors and to light up the whole neighborhood actually to just make the garbage disappear from the, from the roof and just have the, the message appear. And the message actually is a quote from a, from a Coptic bishop from the fourth century, originally from Alexandria, that says, um, anyone, in Arabic it says, in arada ahad an yabsar nur al-shams, fa'inna alayhi an yamsa alayhi. In, uh, in English, it means uh, anyone wants to see the sunlight clearly need to wipe his eyes first. So we lighted up the neighborhood like that. So it was super cool. Now it was it was a night. Imagine like a like a nightclub, but uh, <laughs> at the size of a city. You know, so it was crazy. And um, and there is Hamu Ibrahim. Hamu Ibrahim actually is uh, is the owner of this house just in front of me. This one. So actually, his house is the one that has been the most painted. And he was telling us that he never, I mean, he told us that he didn't go to the mountain for years, you know? And that uh, he said, like, if I, stop, uh, if I stop working, we'll stop the garbage. So that's, I think of this sometime. Um, and, uh, and when, you know, like, when we finished the piece, I told him, like, Amu Barim, please come and check it out. So he, he put his galabi on and with his scarf and he came. And, uh, and he said, like, uh, this project was, is a project of peace. And, uh, and I don't know what he means. He said, like, it's a project of peace, and he brought people together. Yeah, people together, that's what he said. And when we did this project, there is uh, the woman who speak, who said, like, if it was not because of us, the whole Egypt would be a dump. This woman, like, uh, Uma Ataf, she had her house in front of the house of Khaltu Farida, you know. And, like we like most of the time chilling in front of the house of Khaltu Farida. But slowly after like days after day, this woman like was moving her chair, like coming slowly. <laughs> that was weird, like we didn't notice it, but slowly, day after day, like she was moving her chair like in front of her house, like next to the street street, and then she was coming. At the end of the project, she was sitting with this other woman. And we noticed actually they were sisters. We didn't know that. And I don't know if it was like I don't know if it was the project, but I don't know if Amu Brahim like meant this, but I'm still like wondering if he was that. So um, yeah, so that's the final piece at the end. Yeah, and uh, the piece is still available. I mean, available. I mean, you can still see it. It's not the same color, and people they start building, you know, like a, 
Actually, I think the guy here was so mad that we didn't paint his house, like he built like two floors. <laughs> so he's covering the house of, uh, of Hamu Ibrahim. And uh, yeah, but you know, that's the point. Some people say, why well, don't you go and redo it? And, like, and we varnish it. I remember usually uh, I never do this, but this project, we, we varnished the paint. So it was a crazy logistic. We had like 12 lifts. And so it was like, I was tracing the color and, uh, and I was tracing actually the outline and then putting the number of the, the color, like orange one, orange two, orange three. And then my team was like filling up the white, the color and the black. And uh, there is some mistake. There's some place we couldn't paint. And there's also a mistake of, uh, of color. I don't know if you can see them, but one guy of my team actually was colorblind. And I didn't know. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. You know, I didn't know that, but I swear I was colorblind. <laughs> and you, I was like, Nabil, why did you? It's not the same orange. He's like, yes. And then it's like, it's like why? This, why? I, he couldn't under, he did, he said, I didn't understand why you called them orange one, orange two, orange three. For me, him, it was like just names. But uh, so, yeah, it's funny. So, yeah, so we're launching a book next week uh, in New York uh, at MoMA. I'm so happy about that and super cool. Now what Tuna Yas does, <laughs> you brought us light. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,